who wasn't involved in the convening of this week's full UST Council meeting uh, will participate in virtual discussion. Mr. Yanki says the situation is serious and he's urging students at the university's campuses across the region to remain calm and let the council deal with the issues. The Vanuatu stand for us to seek uh, advice and see if the suspension is legal or not. If the suspension is in bad faith or good faith, and this is what we will uh, look for. And um, the management mechanisms of uh, USP. That's the Director General for Education in Vanuatu, Igmar Siati. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for University of South Pacific staff and students was questioned by CG police this morning. He said confirmed Elizabeth Reed Fong has been investigated for an alleged breach of COVID-19 restrictions. Dr. Reed Fong, who's a chief librarian at the university, went into a police office in Suva after being requested to do so. She was reportedly instrumental in organizing last week's protest at the Lothana campus. U.S. newly elected Premier has called for the island's inclusion in a travel bubble. Like the Cook Islands, New is part of the realm of New Zealand and is also heavily dependent on tourism. As Jamie Tahana... ...raising the bubble idea when he speaks with the New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. He says as both countries free of COVID-19, a Pacific tourism bubble with New Zealand would be possible. Mr. Tangilangi has suggested a travel bubble between Niue, the Cook Islands, Samoa, Tonga and New Zealand. But New Zealand's government has maintained that it first wants to open a travel bubble with Australia, then the Pacific. For Jamie Tahana, aho. Tonga's government says it's planning a flight to repatriate 50 Tongans stranded in New Zealand by COVID-19. The tourism ministry says it's conducted a drill today for staff who've been involved in repatriating and quarantining the passengers. Ben Robinson Drawbridge has more. The tourism ministry told Matangi Tonga the first repatriation flight could take place in July. Air New Zealand says it's in discussions about assisting. Reports that the first flight was to take place today on a cargo plane were incorrect. Air New Zealand says its weekly cargo flight to the kingdom does not carry passengers. The ministry says medical teams, customs, immigration, police and security staff are ready to receive anybody repatriated as our staff at the Tānoa Hotel where they'll be quarantined for a fortnight. Tongans wishing to go home must apply online at the government's repatriation registry. This has been Robinson Drawbridge. Samoans returning on repatriation flights may soon be able to spend their two weeks quarantine at home. All new arrivals are currently being held for 14 days at a government-run facility under COVID-19 restrictions. Prime Minister Toi Lai Fasalili Malayangawe has told Parliament returning seasonal workers and those who have been overseas for medical treatments may be allowed to go. Department of Public Safety in the Northern Marianas has brought a man from Rota to Saipan after learning he recently arrived by boat from Guam. The man's currently at the Pacific Islands Club Saipan isolation site. Prior to arriving on Saipan, he self-quarantined at home for 14 days with a police car parked outside to ensure that he didn't leave. The man will reportedly have to pay for his way back to Rota after a 14-day quarantine period is over on Saipan. The case brought against the prosecutor in French Polynesia by the pro independence leader Oscar Tamaru has been deferred by a week amid suggestions it could be transferred to France. Mr Tamaru sought a preliminary ruling after the prosecutor Herb Leroy last week explained why he ordered the seizure of 100,000 US dollars from Mr Tamaru's savings account. Mr Leroy intervened over Mr Tamaru's uh, court conviction last year. Mr. Tamaru said the case was still on appeal, and Mr. Leroy therefore violated the presumption of his innocence. Today's hearing was adjourned until the 22nd of June, with the judge suggesting she might not be able to rule because the prosecutor was part of the same judicial organization in Tahiti. The airline French B says it will resume regular flights from France to French Polynesia in mid-July, when quarantine restrictions will be lifted. The carrier says it will initially fly once a week via Guadeloupe and twice a week from August, as Walter's wife, Elle, reports.
French pieces from August. It will hopefully fly via San Francisco, which seems to be the stopover point before the COVID-19 outbreak. The airline was forced to bypass California in March because of the U.S. decision to stop non-American passengers from Europe. French Air will put on a special flight on the 10th of July. Back to France. Reports say reimbursement issues remain for passengers whose flights were cancelled during the travel suspension period. This is Walter Swyfra. North police have suffered half the COVID-19 deaths that have occurred to date in the northwest of the United States state of Arkansas. The Marshallese community make up just 3% of the population, and of the 48 deaths in the region, 14 have been Marshallese. Department of Health figures show 6% of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the state are Pacific Islanders, but they make up just 0.4% of the population. Local media reports Community Clinic has tested 767 Marshallese patients and 31% of them tested positive. A researcher at the University of Arkansas says a lack of testing as the pandemic took hold in March and April was the major factor in the disease spreading in the Marshallese community. A survey being carried out in Samoa hopes to assess the impact of the COVID-19 state of emergency on households. The United Nations wants to know what the social and economic effect of the measures has been. It's looking at economic and food security, employment, the debt burden, and people's general standard of living. Results will help the Samoan government and aid donors better understand how Samoans are coping with the pandemic. The UN is promising the survey is anonymous and no personal information will be made public. Solomon Islands are building facilities for the 2023 Pacific Games, the biggest sporting event of the region, on former battlefields at Guadalcanal Islands. They're having to clear second World War debris, including unexploded ammunition. A leader of the team clearing the unexploded munitions says they've so far found parts of planes and hundreds of rounds of small arms ammunition. Some of the munitions are under a school playing field. Facilities being built include a stadium and aquatic centre.